Hello, welcome to Learning to Drum. I'm your host, Adam Tevlin, and last week we covered solo number six, a little bit more difficult of a solo. Hopefully you've gotten through that, at least at a slow tempo, and we learned our new rudiment, the single drag tap. Welcome back, and if this is your first time watching, go back to episode one. Don't need to explain. So we're in episode 34, week 37, and we're gonna review the single drag tap, as well as introduce a new rudiment, and study number 16. Okay, so let's grab our sticks and let's go ahead and review the single drag tap. We'll start it at 70 and I have my triplets dialed up. Remember the rudiment? Hopefully you can get the hang of that, right? Right? Okay, so hopefully you got the hang of that. Okay, here we go. Two, ready, go. Okay. All right, so you know you have the drag, right? And then you have another free stroke. And then that last stroke, of course, is a silent upstroke plus downstroke, okay, right? Right? So on that note, I prepare my right to do that downstroke, right? Okay, it's real important to do that. And after a while, you can kind of, like, like earlier, break the gelatin mold, get a little bit more relaxed with it, but you're really, really understanding all those movements when you take it that slow in that disciplined fashion of that gelatin mold, okay? All right, let's jump it up to 80. Remember our test goal would be at 100. Here we go. One, two, here we go. No big deal, okay? Let's try 90. It's a little bit faster. If you can't hang, that's okay. All right, here we go. One, Two, here we go. There we go. And again, like I said, the test goal is gonna be at 100. Try your best to work towards that goal. And remember, it's taking it at your pace, so no rush into that, okay? All right, now last week we didn't review the drag exercise. I just let you go on that and hopefully you're getting a hang of that as well. But what we can do here, we're going to go ahead and go over it. Hopefully you're getting a, a good sense of what that feels like, those drags and any part of that beat. So let's go ahead and dial the metronome back down to 70. Hopefully you're at that point. Remember that you can improvise and just place a drag wherever you want, right? At least for me, I just got used to the downbeat, having the drag on there. Okay, and then also the E, same thing. Okay, you'd probably have to do it slower. But I got used to these little individual things here, these rhythmical cells, these different rhythmical cells, that is, with the drag being on any part of that beat. Now, when it gets into the, let's say, measure uh, nine, where we're going one, two, okay, I might just repeat that there, the, what does that sound like? If I put an accent there on beats three and four, if I put an accent on the and of uh, three, and then an accent on the E of four, I will have, huh? those are, single drag taps without the accent, okay? So the point I'm trying to make, and I'm, I'm kind of digressing here, is that you want to really, really get used to this stuff. And same thing with the fives. Just do that over and over. But that's just one way of trying to do this exercise because there's individual components that you might have to get good at, okay? Before you can take the whole thing. But we're gonna take the whole thing at 70. There we are, here we go, one. Two, ready and go. And one, two, three, four. The uh. 
this. Here we go. That's at 70. Hopefully you're getting the feel of that. Like I said, if you have to take this and break it down, if you deliberately practice on those problem spots, you can take the whole thing much easier. Speaking of which, you might want to stretch out. Stretching out there is always a good thing. Remember all those stretches we did? Okay, great. So that's the drag exercise and we are going to move into now our new rudiment. I know all these different rudiments and everything like that, but uh, by the end of the season, you're gonna know 13 rudiments, actually 14 if you include the multiple bounce roll. So that's pretty cool and exciting in my opinion. All right, so the new rudiment, we're gonna turn to page eight now in the Learning to Drum book that you've all bought, right? All right, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all right, so single ratum and cue is going to be the new rudiment that we have. Since we've known the drag, you know, we're going to be able to do this rudiment. And remember what we talked about, compound value when it comes to playing certain things. Because you can play A, B, and C, D, E, and F, it gets a little bit easier. Or you have the ability to do it because you have those components of it. Re remember, three rudiments that uh, are, are the ones that kind of boil down to, which are singles, doubles, and flams. Everything else is a combination of one of those, right? Okay, so how that's going to sound, again, I have a drag. It is a grace note drag, much like the single drag tap or the half drag or drag or roof. Okay, I said it. All right, so it's going to be like that, okay? And once I get that uh, drag happening, I have three free strokes uh, or, or, you know, uh, rebound strokes, right? And then my large control stroke or down stroke there on that quarter note. So it's going to sound like this. Okay, so I'm going to play that open, closed, open, so you can hear how that sounds. All right. Okay, there it is. And what I like to do, of course, is play it with the metronome. So we can start at 70. And I'll show you how that's done because what I like to do is I like to, I'm gonna bring down my beat level so you can just hear the triplets. I'm gonna dial up my triplets there at 70. Okay, so you can just hear that, right? And now how Radom McHughes could be practiced with that, it'd be like this, one, two, here, I go. Okay, so let's try that together. First, you want to probably do one or two Radom cues in a row just to kind of see how that feels. And then let's go ahead and play it together there. We'll try it. There we go. One, two, here we go. Da -da -da. Okay, that's what it is at 70. All right, let's try it at 80 now. I know this rudiment's new to you, so I would say push pause, work on it, come back, and let's play together. Or you can play by yourself, whichever you prefer. Here we go. One, here we go. One, two, here. simple enough. The goal is going to be at 150. Okay, let's try 90 together. 
and see if we can do 90 and then I'll play it at 150 so you can hear what that sounds like. It's not too, too bad, okay? 90, here we go. One, two, here we go. Okay, no big deal. It's a little faster, huh? You don't have to play with me, just hear how it sounds. Lug -a -da -da, lug -a -da -da. One, two, here I go. That's it. Okay, so that's 150, that's the goal that we're gonna have for the Radamac And the rudiment actually sounds like the name itself, right? Radamac Q, Radamac Q, Radamac Q, Radamac Q. And really that's why all these different weird names for these rudiments came about is because it kind of sounded like, you know, the rudiment itself, the name. So anyway, work on that. I hope you enjoy those. Those are really fun to play. So now moving on to study number 16. We have a new time signature. All right, okay, so if you looked ahead, okay, you've seen that, stay, you've seen that we're now in a new time signature and can anyone take a guess how many beats per measure there are, right? So the new time signature is three, four, we take away that three, we have the now fraction one fourth, so the quarter note still gets the beat. And that top number, when we put back that number three, lets us know how many beats per measure. So now we're into three beats per measure. So at the top of page 39, you'll see that three, four time, okay, is three beats per measure, as opposed to four and four, four time, or two and two, four time. We just got done with two, four time. So three, four time, this is pretty easy. So. We've had these rhythms before, it just has a different feel and a different weight. And when we dial up our metronome, we wanna make sure that our beat level is on three. So we have the high click on every three, right? And I'm gonna go down now to 80 beats per minute. And we're gonna read this through. We're gonna, we'll go ahead and do the repeats and you can stick it however you want it. Uh, alternate or natural, doesn't matter. Number one here, we just have quarter notes. So I'll just do quarter notes. One. We're at 80, okay? One, two, three, one, number one, and play. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, repeat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? No big deal, okay? Now I'm gonna dial up my eighth notes because number two, I have some eighth notes. And notice that each measure is not a repeated measure, much like in when we were learning in 4-4 time. This is actually kind of variating some of those rhythms so you can really try to get the feel of what that 3-4 time is gonna feel like, okay? So here we go for number two, and two, three, one, and two, three, one, two, Three, one, ready, play, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, three, and one, and two, and three, one, two, repeat, one, and two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three. All right. Not too big of a deal. It's kind of a different feel, though. Dun, uh, uh, two, two, three. Okay, typically, uh, and we're going to play this eventually, which is somewhat of called a, a waltz. And what a waltz is, is a, a piece of music. It's a type of dance, uh, popular a long time ago. They still do waltzes today and, and everything, but it's in 3-4 time. And, and I'm sure you've heard uh, waltzes before. Blum, blum. Blum, 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 blum. Anyway, that's in three, four time. So kind of feel that as we're going through these exercises. Number three, two and three, one, two and three, and one, two, three, one and two, and here we, two, three, one, here we go. And one and two and three, and one and two and three, and one and two and three. And 
pretty self-explanatory. Number four, we're going to have an eighth rest in there. So we got one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. Okay, number four. One, two, three. One, ready, play. And one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two three and one and two and three and that's a little tricky okay so if you have to take it slower it's no big deal here we go for number five now in measure two be careful with that just because we have quarter notes in there does not necessarily mean that it's on the downbeat so if we look at that measure two that eighth note comes on the downbeat of one, and then that quarter note comes on the and of one. And since that quarter note takes up two eighth note spots, it's gonna also take care of the downbeat of two. And so that next quarter note, we're on the and of two. The last note, remember, process of elimination, whatever that last note is, kind of gets you to know what part of the beat it's gonna come on. We know that the last note, if it's an eighth note, it's gonna come on the and. And in this case scenario, it's gonna come on the and of three, okay? So it'll sound like this, one and two and three and, okay? No big deal. Okay, here we go. Number five. One, two, three, one, ready, play. And one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two repeat and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three one and two and three pretty cool huh all right so number six is kind of easy we're now having the data quarter notes and and you know the drill this is kind of like working our way up much like what we did when we were learning four four time all right so number six one and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, and one, two. Got it? Here we go. Three, one, ready, play, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, repeat, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two. Three. Okay, so yeah, you notice that there in the first measure, that's self-explanatory. We have the dotted quarter note that's taken up the downbeat of two all the way up to the downbeat of two. Now we're on the and of two with that eighth note, and then we're in downbeat of three. Now the second measure is a little weird. Did you catch that? It's okay, we have the quarter note on the downbeat. Eighth note comes on beat two, believe it or not. And then that data quarter note, which takes care of the rest of the measure, comes on the and of two. So one and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three. All right, number seven. Now we have 16 notes. One e and a two, three and one e and a two and three and one e and a two, three. One and two e and a three, okay? Two, three. One, ready, seven. One and a two and three and one and a two and three and one and a two and three and one and two and a three. Repeat. Two and three and two and three and one and three and one. Okay. All right, so that's number seven. And number eight is a little different. Now we're having those rhythmical cells that we've had in our 16th note warm up. Hopefully you're still working on that. And it's one and a two and a three E and one E and two and three and a one E and two and a three and a one E and two, three. Okay, here we go for number eight, the final one. Two, three, one, ready and play. And one and a two and a three E and one E and two. Three and a one and two and a three and a one e and two and repeat and one and a two and a three and one e and two and and a one e and two and a three and a one e and two and three. All right, there it is, and hopefully you're getting the feel of this three four time and and uh, getting a grasp on it. It's 
It's just a different feel than 2.4 and 4.4. So hopefully you enjoy that and work on it. If you have to slow it down, slow it down. Don't forget about all these warm-ups that we've been working on, rudiments that we've been learning, even the ones that we've learned at the beginning of the season because you want to just keep up with those. We might have a test next week. We'll see, okay? All right, well, this is all we have for this week on Learning to Drum. I'm your host, Adam Tellen, and always remember to keep swinging those sticks.